on the pitch. They think it's all over. It is now. Hello and welcome to They Think It's All Over. Now, David is off sipping gin and tonics in India, so we're happy to welcome, as his replacement, an Olympic rower who, after winning three consecutive gold medals with Steve Redgrave, is known across the globe as the Andrew Ridgely of rowing. <laughs> Matthew Pinsent, CBE. <laughs> With Matthew and Jonathan this week is a former world champion racing driver, although these days the only driving he does is taking the kids to school. He usually splutters to a halt outside the post office. <laughs> Damon Hill, OBE. <laughs> Gary is still away, getting a real tan to go on top of his fake one, so once more into the breach steps Steve Davis. With Steve and Rory is ITV's Formula One and basketball presenter who caused a stir at Wimbledon last year when she snogged Olympic rower James Cracknell in the Royal Box. Prince Harry was so shocked, he dropped his crack pipe. <laughs> Beverly Turner. We kick off this week with Sporting Bluff, Matthew, Jonathan and Damon. Your three alleged facts concern the team for whom Damon here won the Formula One world title. That is, of course, Williams. The Williams Motor Racing Team was once sponsored by the Cray family. The Williams Motor Racing Team was once sponsored by the Royal family. The Williams Motor Racing Team was once sponsored by the Bin Laden family. <laughs> Before we start, Nick, may yeah. I just say, <laughs> what an enormous honour it is for me to be sitting next to this man, ladies and gentlemen. Fantastic. And look at the size of him. If ever there was an argument in favour of GM foods, look at him. <laughs> you do look like a 15-year-old bingo caller next to him. <laughs> <laughs> but what an honour to be sitting next to a man who is a close personal friend of Sir Stephen Redgrave. <laughs> <laughs> Five-time gold winner, Sir Stephen Redgrave. <laughs> Fantastic! What a man! I'll give him your best. I'm on, on the most honoured team on the show, isn't it? Because you've got the CBE, is that right? Yep. And Damon Hill, lovely to have Damon Hill, you have the OBE? The OBE. Yeah. And believe it or not, I have an MBE. <laughs> I stole it from David's dressing room. <laughs> no reasonable offer refused. You've been decorated by the Queen, haven't you? Y yes, I have, yes. Uh, yeah, Jonathan's been decorated by David Blunkett. <laughs> Of course, Gary, Gary Lineker, I, Gary Lineker when he's here, he's an, an OBE and an Earl, which makes him an earlobe. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine if it was the royal family, though. They would say, uh, who's in the old banger? Oh, it's just Charles, lapping Camilla. <laughs> <laughs> hey, come on, that, that is a racing term. Oh. That is a racing term. <laughs> you know Harry's got some extra speed if you need it. Oh. <laughs> I've gotten a way you could improve uh, driving performance, I think. They should improve the pit stops. You should have Definitely. an interval. We have intervals. <laughs> well, you do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Every snooker yeah. player does. Yours has gone from 1989 to the present day. <laughs> I tell you what, though, it is genuinely a field to have Damon on, because Damon was one of the greats as well. This is a top show, this isn't it? really is. One of the greats. In your glory days, you were superb. Obviously, you lost it a bit in the later years. <laughs> it was quite sad. I remember tuning in once and seeing you being lapped by Stephen Hawking. But even so... <laughs> did you sort of calm down as you got older, do you think? Because I have this picture of you sitting in your car and Michael Schumacher tearing past and you're going, you won't get there... Be any quicker, you know. <laughs> what was the other one? Bin Laden. Bin Laden, yeah. Bin Laden. Well, you'd know if it was Bin Laden, wouldn't you? Because they'd be the drivers who get in, they wouldn't ask where the brake pedal was, would they? <laughs> Is there plenty of fuel? I'm off! <laughs> um, I think it's Bin Laden. You think Bin Laden? Yeah. What do you yeah. think, Captain? I'm happy to go with the motor racing okay. aspect. OK, so you think that Rory was telling the truth. Let's see if you're right. <laughs> Rory was telling the truth, the Bin Laden family sponsored Williams back in 1979, promoting their bedroom furniture business. The Bin Laden family made millions in the 70s from cheap domestic furniture. Their chief rivals at the time were the provisional MFI and continuity <laughs> world of leather. <laughs> Steve, Rory and Beverly, it's that much-travelled manager for you, Steve Bruce. Here he is, watching his latest charges, Birmingham, go out of the cup to Liverpool. 
Gerrard. And Nelka. Nicholas Anelka's first goal back in English football. Now, in the last year or so, Steve Bruce has been manager of Huddersfield, Wigan, Crystal Palace and now Birmingham. What we want to know is, what does Steve Bruce do between jobs? In between jobs, Steve Bruce is a Samaritan's telephonist. In between jobs, Steve Bruce is a spirit medium. In between jobs, Steve Bruce is a novelist. Samaritans, or Tottenham Hotspur Club Call, as they're called. <laughs> spirit medium? I don't know. Medium. I know that Peter Beardsley went to see a faith healer. Oh, sorry, it was a face healer, sorry. <laughs> You'd like to be a medium, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, because I am double extra large and also small. <laughs> Did you used to go to Jamie Dixon, didn't you? A long, long time ago. There was a scurrilous God. story in the sun. Ages and ages. Ages and ages ago. ago. Nobody can remember it except us. <laughs> <laughs> Beverly had suggested that her ex-boyfriend, Jamie, was not over-blessed in the Todger department. <laughs> no, I did not. Just for the record. But you didn't, but that's what the story was. That was the story yeah. in the paper, yeah, and it did get a little bit out of hand. <laughs> That counts as big for me. <laughs> you like rowers, don't you, Beverly? I don't Thank like all, all rowers. What so which rowers don't you like? Just the owl and the pussycat. <laughs> <laughs> but lycra is very attractive on men, isn't it? Lycra mm. on certain men. Mm. I don't think it should be recommended as a team outfit here, to be honest. <laughs> Can I just deal with one thing now, which yeah. is probably on your mind? Just in case there's any awkward tension later on in the programme, I am married. <laughs> I think Steve's more my type, actually. Really? Yeah, I think so. Really? The quiet type, you know. Quite dull type. No. <laughs> the grateful yeah. type. <laughs> Steve Bruce. I've got a feeling I read somewhere he, he had written novels. He wrote A Tale of Two Cities, Four Uniteds and a Crystal Palace, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> so you trying to say it's a novelist? You think Jonathan told the truth? Let's see if you're right. <laughs> yes, Jonathan had it correctly. Steve Bruce puts his well-hidden literary skills to good use on crime novels. Here's one. Fantastic, starring a familiar sounding hero manager called Steve Barnes. And here's an example of why Steve Bruce has never won the Booker Prize. You smell good, I said. You smell, she replied. I knew it wasn't true, so I guessed that when she wasn't busy being an international terrorist, she must have a sense of humour. <laughs> well, that's from Sweeper, which coincidentally is Steve's next job. <laughs> Steve's kids have now been to more primary schools than chicken pox. The social services are thinking of taking his children away and giving them to the Killshaws. <laughs> to be fair, Steve isn't the only footballer who's written fiction. There was Jonathan Woodgate's statement to the police. <laughs> and at the end of that round, Matthew's team have three points and Steve's team have three points. The second round this week has us examining some more ridiculous excuses. Matthew's team, your question this week concerns West Ham. Seen here dumping Macclesfield out of the cup. Put it header away by Adams. Nobody picked it up except Cole, who makes it three. Now, that match came right after the team's controversial Christmas party at which Australian defender Hayden Fox there stood on the bar of the Sugar Reef nightclub and openly relieved himself. But of course, he had a perfectly good excuse for urinating in public. So what was it, Matthew's team? Steve, did you not have something similar happen to you when you went to a club called The Crucible and Ronnie O'Sullivan pissed all over you? <laughs> Well, you're not going to get a knighthood that way. <laughs> Steve, snap back with one of your one-liners. Go on. Bollocks. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> David, you, when you're in the car there, how do you drive all that period? How do you do that without weeing? Well, they've got very tight crutch straps, you know? You get them to pull them tight and then you just uh, hold I'm it I'm going to ask about the party afterwards. <laughs> when you're in the car... <laughs> but how do you avoid... Do you, uh, is there techniques, mind control? Is there something you do? Uh, bladder control, usually, you know, sort of thing you learn when you're growing up. And <laughs> It's the sort of thing you learn when growing up. There you see you have Jonathan at a disadvantage. <laughs> <laughs> I've never wet myself. You've never wet yourself. What about I, other drivers? I've cracked myself a few times. <laughs> <laughs> but other drivers must wee, don't they? I, I'm sure. Yeah, there was uh, a couple of, well, we can't mention any names, but there was one guy who used to pee um, so often it used to um, rot the chassis and he used to have to keep changing the car. <laughs> Poor little Jensen Button. <laughs> <laughs> they put a potty in there for him. <laughs> and a nightlight. <laughs> and a mobile. <laughs> was he at a party this yeah, night? Yeah, 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 yeah. At parties, it's excusable. People do weird things at party. Why, just uh, a, a little while ago, we had our big Christmas party, didn't we? You don't remember much of it, do you, Nick? You photocopied your ass. Did I? Yeah, you had to push four machines together, but... <laughs> <laughs> David Gower bought his young nephew. Who would have thought he had family in the Philippines? <laughs> <laughs> a lovely young boy, Suck Young Dick, I think his name was. He <laughs> was a lovely fan. <laughs> <laughs> so what excuses did he give? Yeah. He was, he was full of high spirits. No. He'd met a young lady, he wanted to mark his territory. No. <laughs> Aidan Fox's agent, Peter Smiley, said that his client was merely attempting to water a thirsty pot plant with his willy. <laughs> And watching Jordan was said to be shocked, she'd never seen one pointing downwards before. <laughs> We've seen in response to Jonathan's plea last week for more female <coughs> sports action, we take a look now at women's boxing. Here's Cambridge University's first ever woman boxer, Jess Hudson, in training for her latest fight. On your front. Three. Again. Up and down. Now, what we want to know is, why was an amateur bout featuring Jess and model Tamazin Malia banned at the 11th hour? Was there a massive argument over whether the scales were right? <laughs> <laughs> You're a fan of lady boxers, aren't you, Wally? Although you prefer lady I'll Labradors, given the choice, yes. <laughs> Sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah. It's an old friend. It's yeah. a lovely, lovely old friend. It's an old friend. She's a model. Yes, Tamazin Malia, I believe her name was. You used to be a model, didn't you? I did do some modelling, yeah, through, uh, while I was at college and stuff. What, what did you, what did you, model? Did you model? All sorts of things. Sports commercial, wear. sportswear, swimwear. Swimwear? <laughs> <laughs> you ever do a thong? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, when, you, when, you, when you're modelling swimwear, do you have to sort of, you know, do any waxing? I did wax James's legs recently. Matt knows this. Matt's seen him in the shower. He was, like Why? Matt, has to have treatment and they were so hairy that it hurt to have massages. So he was going to shave them and I said, don't shave them, they'll just grow back more hairy. So I said, I'll wax them. Did you do the plums? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. But we did have that dilemma of where to stop. At one point, he was wearing furry hot pants. <laughs> <laughs> I think life has just passed me by. <laughs> that reminds me. That reminds me of a strip I saw underneath a Polish hotel once. <laughs> <laughs> when she was completely naked, it looks like she was wearing cashmere knickers. <laughs> All the way round. All the way round. Can we have an answer off you? Okay, some man decided that he just didn't want them to do it. Yeah, I'll give you I points think about for that. Hey. Yeah, I'll give you <laughs> Yes, even though the fight was perfectly legal, ABA officials said they disapproved of women fighting, and they called it off on the technical grounds that the difference in weight between the two women was too great. In fact, women's boxing is the only combat sport with no heavyweight division. Only the, does my bum look big in this division? <laughs> Like their male counterparts, women's world boxing champions win a Lonsdale belt. Although it's the matching Lonsdale handbag they really look forward to. <laughs> Jess Hudson has six A's at A-level and is known as the Carol Vorderman of boxing. Although, as every punch is thought to destroy 10,000 brain cells, it won't be long before she's known as the Carol Smiley of boxing. <laughs> and at the end of that round, Matthew's team have three points and Steve's team have six. You like that one?
Round three sees the introduction of some fresh legs as we bring you our new round, Rules of the Game. Matthew's team, here's something with which your captain at least will be familiar. And at Eton College, the traditional games were once more enthusiastically played. Few holes are barred, but the rules are obscure and involved. And the umpires, who are often the only men to know where the ball really is, have a hard time keeping it in sight. That was the wall game played on St Andrew's Day at Matthew's former school, Eton. Now, as you may have guessed, we'd like to know the rules of this noble sport. We've found four important rules. We'll give you three points if you get two of them, and one point if you only get one. I think one of the rules is, um, is that uh, they, they might let Jonathan Ross within um, about a couple of miles of the, uh, the, the game. No, that's dress, Jonathan dress. King, you're thinking of. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I'm not the one wearing a KY jelly outfit. <laughs> <laughs> But you spotted it with alarming speed. <laughs> How much is eaten per term, young fella? Uh, I, I can't remember. I wasn't paying the bills. Sit up straight. <laughs> I believe eaten is something like £14,000 a term. Can you believe that? £14,000 a term. But apparently you get an education second to none. Let me just check you here. What is the atomic number of strontium? <laughs> Do you know? No, I don't know the atomic number. See, number. I don't know either, but I don't know for nothing. <laughs> I think the rules are you you can't handle the football in the scrum. That's one. You can't punch somebody, but I think I remember it that you can actually kind of grind your fist into someone's face, which is a nice for passing an afternoon. I'll give you I'm three points. I'm thinking very, well, very solid. I'll give you three points. It's, it's nice that you remember something from school, anyway. anyway. Yeah, <laughs> the most important rules we managed to fathom for the wall game were as follows. Number one, players score a point by hitting the ball against either end of the wall. Number two, players are not allowed to handle the ball. Number three, players must not let any part of their body except their feet and hands touch the ground. And number four, players must not strike or hold opponents. Prince Harry is a keen player of the wall game and scores regularly, just before every match. <laughs> Steve's team, have a look at this. <laughs> now, to prevent ugly scenes like that from sullying the good name of football ever again, a code of conduct for football mascots has recently been drawn up. So what are the new rules? Again, I'll give you three points if you get two, and one point if you only get one. Do they have um, mascots in snooker? No. Huey the Kiwi. <laughs> what, for each player? No, Rex okay. the rest. <laughs> Stifle the yawn. <laughs> yeah. so what, what possesses a sort of grown man to dress up, dress up in ludicrous costumes just to please the crowd, Jonathan? Yeah. <laughs> Tell ya, it's such a shame because my big blue sparkly head wasn't back from the cleaners. <laughs> so there is a code of behaviour for yep. mascots. Yep. Not allowed to sort of interfere yep. with plays or gesticulate during the play or. If it's a penalty, for example. Yeah, they certainly can't put off uh, penalty takers. That's one, yeah. Phew. Steve, over to you, mate. No, I haven't got any idea at all. <laughs> yeah, we know that, but just try and answer the question. <laughs> are, they not, are they not allowed to fight the, uh, with, with their helmets off? That's actually two in one. Well done. You get your three points. Well done. Number one, no attempts to put off opposition penalty takers. Number two, keep entire costume on while in character, so mooning is strictly forbidden. Number three, no attacking other mascots, whatever animal they may resemble. <laughs> and number four, no wandering on the pitch during play, especially if you're Leicester's mascot, Adi the Akimbai. <laughs> Cardiff chairman Sam Haman has recently been involved in a bust-up with club mascot Bartley the Bluebird. He's good for the club and good for the crowd, but once he gets his suit on, some of the things he does make you cringe, said the mascot. <laughs> Other club mascots include Wrexham's, called Rex the Lion, Chesterfield's, called Chester the Mouse, and Scunthorpe's, which for some reason is called Thorpey. <laughs> and at the end of that round, Matthew's team have six points and Steve's team have nine.
Now it's time for us to teeter on the brink of legal behaviour as we play field of sportsmen. Jonathan and Matthew, you're up first this week if you'd like to take your positions. Take your blindfolds with you. 90 seconds to work out who you're feeling. Blindfolds on once you get there. Can we have our first mystery guest please? Your time starts now. <laughs> Ponytail. Did Damon? Does Damon <laughs> still there? <laughs> Speak up, Jonathan. We can't hear over this racket. <laughs> Is it? Come on. It's, it? it's a skirt. Is it a tennis racket? What's yeah, it? tennis, tennis. And a skirt. Tim Henman. It's Tim Henman. <laughs> Tim. Britain's hope. Let's float. <laughs> do you mind if I have a little... Um, I don't know who you are, but do you mind if I just touch you a bit? <laughs> See, I've, I've been married for almost 15 years, and for me, this is quite a nice night out. <laughs> if you just tuned in, I'm at Club X-Way. <laughs> I did nothing! <laughs> I tell you what, come down here, these legs are nice. <laughs> oh, that's not allowed in tennis. Yeah, hey. you're right, actually. <laughs> Britain's... Uh, la lady tennis player, woman. England's leading seed. I'll, I'll be needing the name if it's Britain's ladies number one. Come on. That's Betty Stover. <laughs> Betty Stover. <laughs> oh, no, can't be. There's no pipe. <laughs> Britney Stover. <laughs> Britney Stover. <laughs> it is Pat Hannah Collin. Hey, Hannah. <laughs> Stephen Rory, off you. You're very well behaved, boys, <laughs> weren't you? Yeah, well, because we've learned from you, and I saw you last week trying to take that young girl's temperature with just your finger, and that isn't about... <laughs> She complained. <laughs> she was normal, by the way. Can we have our second mystery guest, please? Okay, and your time starts now. <laughs> oh. Sorry. Yes, man. I think we're in luck. <laughs> oh, I think we're going to be in a minute. Oh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I've got my like, Jordan's implant. Oh. <laughs> I think it's James Cracknell. <laughs> Smooth legs, and of course, you know. He's very thin. <laughs> Oh, I say. Quite fancy the stronger woman. The person's woman. got no legs. Well, hang on. Is that an arm? <laughs> it's, it's bigger than my leg. <laughs> that feels like, where feel that? It's about the same. Well, seriously, is it something else? <laughs> oh, have you done, have you done a posh spice joke already? <laughs> it's that uh, Cambridge boxer whose name, name uh, this Jessica. Is, this feels a bit hairy. Jessica, Jessica Hudson. Jess Hudson is correct. Yeah. So the scores at the end of that round are Matthew's team with six, but Steve's team with twelve. We wind up the show by playing the main game. The team in the lead goes first, which is Steve's team, quite easily. Beverly, can you pass those along, please, to Rory? As many names as you can in 90 seconds, starting now. Um, the famous novelist, United player, manager... Uh, Steve yeah, Bruce. That's it, very. This is your boyfriend that was. Your current boyfriend, I should say. That was? James Cracknell? Yeah. Oh, it's just God. that he was snogging somebody else backstage. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie right, this is a actually. retired <laughs> NBA star. He used to play for the Minnesota Timberwolves. Uh, right. Common name for potato. Oh, Spud. He wasn't playing worldwide. When I was it. Yeah, Spud. Um, worldwide. Spud. Worldwide. Worldwide. Oh, when you're on the internet, you're on the worldwide oh, web. 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 <laughs> now. <laughs> this is what what um, the um, Australian West Ham player did on that bar. You know, he 
Wait. Well, uh, yeah, the right, right first letter. P. It sounds like P, P. And it's what he calls a uh, roux. <laughs> Woo. P. Woo. And it's uh, at a wedding, this person traditionally shags the bridesmaid. P. Woo. Best man, of course. <laughs> News at ten. News at ten. News at ten. News to have this. News at ten. And do that sound in between. Dong. Ding. <laughs> Not <a> dong. <laughs> dong. A sort of a dong. It's more of a bong. Bong. Oh. That's right. And what do pigeons do? Well, they... <laughs> what noise do they make? They squawk. Coo. 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 Bong. Coo. Bong. Coo. Coo. Yeah. We're in with a chance. <laughs> You say you're in with the tracks, you need 12. Bring it on. 12. Bring it on, Hancock. Time starts now. OK, it was the uh, piss artist from earlier. He was standing on the bar. His name was... Oh, uh, the Aussie... Oh, first name is like a, second name is like a little animal, not a wolf. It's a... Fox. So first name Hayden is a Fox. Oh, yeah, there you go. Well done. Uh, he's a bloke. He's got five Olympic medals. He is... I'll tell you what, I'm just so impressed. Sir Stephen. That's the man. OK, he's a, he's a bloke. Probably, once you get to know him, he might be a lovely bloke. I don't know. At the moment, we're not on talking terms. <laughs> Surely that's enough. <laughs> he lives in a cave. Oh, Bin Laden. Bin Laden. Oh, Bin Laden. <laughs> uh, OK, this bloke, I believe he's a German for cobbler. Schumacher. He, Schumacher, first there you name? go. First Michael. name? He knows the first Michael. name. Michael. Don't Michael. be so pedantic, Hancock. There's a wolf as well. You know he's not. Come on. All right. OK, all right, OK. Herman. Oh, all right, this one. If you, were, if, you were, if you were doing what that bloke did from the bar, and you didn't <laughs> shake enough. <laughs> Often there's a little bit drip. extra, like Dribble. a drip. Dribble. Dribble. More of a, Dribble. Uh, more of a, like a, ma a magician uh, would do something. It'd be a magic trick. And you, trickle. trickle, trickle. And the first name is where it comes from. Dick trickle. No. Dick trickle. Well done. <laughs> All right. Well done. You're cooking now. <laughs> this one is another ma mascot, the South End mascot. It's from the crustacean family. Small and pink. Not a crab. No. Lobster. Lobster. Tiny little fella. Shrimp. Herman yeah, crab. it's a shrimp. And his first name is the same as Mr. Davis Jr. Sammy, Sammy, Shrimp. Sammy the Shrimp, OK. <laughs> this is my favourite Arrows player. He, uh, he looks a bit like Dracula. Well, he doesn't, but he sounds like Dracula. His oh. second name is, when you blow your nose or anything else that's dripping, into a disposable... Tissue. Yeah, also another word for it. Hanky. Is a hanky. First name will be the same as our former <laughs> Prime Minister, Heath. Heath. <laughs> Edward Hanky. Ted. 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 That's hanky. right. And the middle name is, on, on Sesame Street, the bloke who used to teach the kids numbers. Oh, Count Dracula. The Count, then. Yes. We've got to get that. Yeah, oh, oh, jeez. <laughs> Good effort, Matthew's team have 13, but this week's winner is Steve's team with 17. So our thanks to Matthew, Jonathan and Damon, Steve, Rory and Beverly. We're all off to give Steve Redgrave the credit for Matthew's performance. <laughs> My name's Nick Hancock, they think it's all over, it is now. George Best and Linford Christie. It's a question of sport next tonight here on BBC One.